<laughs> okay. <laughs> Made it. Yes. No distortion. Sounds good. How's everybody out there? Welcome to this new expedition that we are doing on the YouTube channel, working our way through these things. Facebook went pretty well, has been going pretty well, and now I think we have the YouTube thing down solid. So um, with this, I think we'll get right into our questions because we have a built up um, reservoir of quite a few questions. So, um, and I don't know any of these. Julia is going to be asking them and spontaneously we'll be flowing into these. So it should be a lot of fun. We're gonna have an exciting hour. <laughs> <laughs> At least we've got our sound all situated out. That's yes. good. Okay. All right. Um, let's go. Actually. Okay. We'll go the questions, but I have something I want to share that Suzanne Spooner shared with me yesterday. And um, so I want to bring it in at some point. It's something that came through in her talk sessions that she does, you know, where she channels in. And, and one of the questions is that, so we might just use that as a segue. And it might be a great way to start this um, as far as it's telling what, it's kind of like the bigger picture of what's going on. And I've heard this from several people. And that's what a lot of people are saying. Is there anything coming in, anything coming, channelings or anything? Is anybody getting any information? And this sums it up just beautifully. But I'm getting a lot of, you know, I'm hearing it from a lot of different practitioners, uh, different sources. So it's really, it's like, this is the, definitely the time to embrace. So if it's okay, um, well, I'll just read it. It's a very short read. It's where she was um, uh, bringing in, her, Suzanne does its uh, talk. Um, they can't hear Kaya. <laughs> you can't hear me? Oh, great. Can't hear me, huh? Boy, oh boy, can you hear me now? Um, uh, anybody, can you hear me? <laughs> we'll um, <laughs> How do I sound? You can hear me, Julian? I can hear you. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody, can you hear me? <laughs> we'll <see. laughs> How do I sound? You can hear me? Yes, yep, can hear you both. It says Adriana. Okay, that means uh, you can get that put back on. <laughs> yeah, they're saying they can hear me. Okay, that means uh, you can get that put back on. Okay. Yeah, they're saying they can hear us both. It's trying to get through this thing. We're not, you know, we're fine. We're just going to. Are you able to move to YouTube? On, on your YouTube, is it, do you have YouTube did a pop up for you too? I do. And just go over there and mute the volume on, mute it on YouTube. Yeah, I'm not hearing any background noise now. Right. Okay. So what I was saying was, um, um, Suzanne, if you don't know Suzanne Spooner, she does um, one, one, first, she's a practitioner, QHHT practitioner, and gets fantastic uh, results and information through her sessions. But she also, before she was a practitioner, she uh, developed uh, a technique that she, it's kind of like a, it's channeling, but uses a pendulum. Uh, to, uh, to assist and she gets information from all sources uh, a lot of times it's from her father who passed and but it's from a lot of different entities a lot of different people out there and um so this one actually came from thoth so i thought that was interesting and um and it's um it has this is the new earth okay um so if i can get it right i can read it clearly here Today, I want to give you knowledge about the plan for Earth. The planet is shedding itself of what is ready to go. This includes the souls who agreed to do a mass exit. Okay, go away message. <laughs> um, the souls who are exiting are beloved teachers of the old paradigm. Their transition is understood by, by them as a new beginning. This is only a change in physicality. 
the virus is an agent, an agent of change. This change will one day be understood as a tipping point for humanity. The light will show all how to be in the new earth. Some will try hard to return to the old ways. This will be what they need to do for their own soul growth. No judgment. Others are using this time of adjustment to change their perspective and create a new reality. This is the new earth. Every soul will create the reality that serves them best. No judgment. Being in the field of light gives a clear vision of your chosen reality. Meditation is the road to the field of light. Create, recreate, and know you are unlimited. Whichever role you are serving in this time of change was predestined by your soul to learn from. If you are experiencing anger, grief, hope, relief, or reprieve, know this is what you need to know more deeply. You are in this together because you are ultimately all one. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. And that, <laughs> so what does, that, what does that mean to you? It's, you know, we've been saying this is a global thing, you know, so it's something that we are all working on right now. We, ha we are dealing with it. We created this on this collective level, and then we're each having our own experiences within it. And that's where we're learning from things. And it's like, you can, you can sit here and go, oh my gosh, and worry and, and fret and, and, you know, when are we going to get back to normal? When, when's this going to happen? And how are we going to do this? And what's happening here? And, and just really get worked up about it. That's fine. That's your choice. If that's the way you want to experience this, or you can just proceed on through and make new creations, make new realities for yourself. And it's like, you know what? I don't know what's going on. Maybe there isn't anything back here. Maybe I just go forward and I create something new. And that's what I feel really strongly with everybody being put, you know, kind of displaced a little bit, you know, not, not your normal working places or your working environments. And it's like, it's time to, you know, what is it you want to do and create that and, and establish that instead of relying on our, our, what we were doing before. It's like, this is a prime opportunity to go and establish yourselves and, and be out there. And I think we're going to have a whole lot of little uh, entrepreneurs and independent businesses out there rather than so many just huge corporations and everybody working for them. It just seems like it just spreads out. Oh, and they're kind of like, it's like a more even basis. But then it's your choice, you know, it's whatever you want to do. So it's this experience is whatever you want it to be. But they're saying this is the new earth is where we are choosing which way we want to go and how we want to do it and what path, what experience we want to have, you know, however we want to do it. And, and it's your choice. It's not something that's happening to us. It's something that we are doing together. It's something that we're just, we're part of. And we're, that's why I keep saying embrace it, you know, make it what you want it to be. The only thing you have any control over, and this is where some of that other stuff comes from, is trying to control. And when we try to control, it's because we are afraid. Pure and simple. It's just afraid. It's fear. And we're trying to, to make everything the way, you know, we don't like change. Change is a little scary, you know, and stuff. We don't know what that means. We don't know where it's going. And that's where they're always saying just trust, you know, um, just go with this, move through it. This is something that was set up long ago. We were going to go through something that was going to shift the global consciousness. We're in it. Like you said, the very first show, red pill, blue pill. We're here. That's what it is. So now the thing we have control over is ourselves and our reactions and how we process this. So we can go to fret and worry and everything. That's fine. If, if that's the experience you want to have, or we can go to something else. Just, just know that that is your choice. That's each and every one of us. We have that choice to make this experience whatever way we want it to be. Nothing is happening to us. Nothing is being done to us. We are not victims. We chose this. We chose this whole event, this whole thing, ooh, the event, this whole thing <laughs> so that we can grow and, and move through it. This is what gets us there, guys. Or I was saying, when's the new earth coming? When's it gonna be? This is it. This is how we get there. It's all in what we do with ourselves in this process. So what does it mean? 
Powerful. Uh, yeah, and you know, it, it allows us to, to really get clear about what serves us and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, I was watching a, I don't know, a YouTube video last night and it was, it was uh, you know, an uplifting video with some background music and it had some really positive affirmations and it was kind of interesting. It was just glancing through that, noticing the effects. Um, and then I, I left and I went and when I came back, there was an automatic replay of what came on. So on one side, we had this really calm, tranquil music. We had positive affirmations and that that's the choice of the vibration that I wanted to match. And I was very much matched into that vibration. <laughs> and I leave the room and I came back and YouTube had this automatic play onto the next thing. And for whatever reason, it went into a news story and the news story was the absolute antithesis of what that message was. The news story, the language of the news story, it popped out much, much more than I guess had I been watching the news piece to piece. Mm -hmm. You know, that interlude of the yeah, positive affirmations and the light and beautiful sound into this. And it sounded like today in New York, the death rate has gotten even stronger. The things are spiraling out of control. The ventilators are not there. These counts are unimaginable right now as we get through into this virus. It's unprecedented times of pain and death that are going around. And I mean, I was just thinking of, uh, influential words were overlapped on top of one another, on top of one another, on top of one another, and top of one another. It wasn't even objective wording. It wasn't objective language. It wasn't objective emotion delivering information. It was, they were layers of word influence overlapping each other to try and drive us somewhere. And it was used for the purpose of alarming because there was nothing else coming out of there. You weren't learning anything of substance by listening to that. The only thing that that's going to do is release stress hormones in your body because there's no solution embedded in it. And if you really think about it, what you've been hearing from the news is problem, 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 problem. It's about 95% of the problem and maybe 5% of the solution. And like, you know, with the way that I operate in the way that, in that we interact and we conduct business and we grow things. My thing is if there's a pro, if there's an issue that's brought to me, you know, think about the problem first and bring it to me with three solutions and let's 97 percent of the time talk about the solution three percent of the time talk about the actual problem and if you just begin to take stock of that in your life when when problems do come up and think am i am i just sitting in that problem in and of itself and am i going to be able to get to a solution in that problem by focusing on the problem no you need to get to a place, a higher vibrational place. And this is one of my favorite quotes of all time with Einstein. He said that problems, the energy that you're on, you will not, I'm paraphrasing it, but you won't solve the problem that you're working on by being in the same vibrational state or the same energetic state of that problem. Right. So being in that emotional place of talking about that problem when you're all worked up trying to work through, that will not get you anywhere. Mm -hmm. you will, you'll be right there and you'll be just budding those negative thoughts and those anger and the emotion that are around that problem. But if you take a break and you digest and you get time to compose yourself and you readjust, those multiple solutions will be coming to you and you just breathe into them. And we're at a state now with what's happening where we have to make a lot of decisions, right? Um, and they can be challenges, problems, whatever. And I think it's it's advantageous to really take stock of what inputs are coming in and what your outputs are. And really, this is the time to, to watch more than ever. Watch what you're absorbing. I know there's a big Netflix boom. Netflix is huge right now. Mm -hmm. Stock's doing super well. Everybody's on Netflix. They're worried it's <laughs> going to take down the internet. But you look at the majority of the shows, like the number one shows on Netflix, and you're seeing like the like Ozark, for instance, and it's like... <laughs> There's a lot of violence. It's a lot of drug dealing it takes place in the Ozarks. I live in the Ozarks. I don't see it. It's not here. <laughs> so. And I realize there's entertainment value in that, but it's not the right type of entertainment value. And, and one of the things is you can gauge the evolution of beings in any society based on what they do for recreation. So if the recreation of the being is to watch murder 
or salacious crimes against one another or who done it of who killed each other that is not a very high vibrational place to be absorbing what your recreational time is your recreational time is best spent doing the things that are in alignment with what lights you up with what gives you that feeling in your heart which would stimulate your heart stimulate your mind and it does it in a way that's sustainable you know and that's another thing to think about when these inputs is what I'm doing for recreation and what I'm bringing in sustainable. You know, obviously you, I go back to like drinking and okay, it's recreation, right? And you just have a few drinks, have a few drinks. If you're having a few drinks every single night, right? That's not sustainable. If you're watching horror films every single night, that's not going to be sustainable because you're just going to be putting so much fear into your mind. So it's important to kind of look at these inputs that are coming into us and taking it a diet a mental diet of what's out there and making the commitment to absorb and to really put into your mind that's what's going to serve you and reinforce the positive belief systems that you have, the energy. It, it can come from the television, it can come from the computer, it can come from social media, it can come from the people that you're talking to on the phone, it can come from the people that you have direct relationship with. Now is the time to really, really just go into the tunnel with all of the things that serve you in life and just let go with everything else. And those will slowly fade into darkness and you just shine your light through the tunnel and just keep going. That's what's really coming to me this week and a way that could benefit us the most is really watching what's coming in and what are we absorbing and is it sustainable and is it helpful? Well, and on that note, Kaya, um, I, I learned that by actually, you know, it was like, you're saying, okay, this is what happens. And I, I, mine came practically. I, it's like over years, I started noticing that, I mean, I was, it was this one show in, in particular, um, cause normally I watch very, very, um, I don't even know what the word is. It's not rated at all. It's like, they're just very like home improvement shows, things like that, that have no, they're just, there isn't anything there. You know, it's like, it's very general. And um, at one time on Netflix, I found this, there was a show on there that I started watching and it was just really, it was really cool. And it just sucked me right in. And I just kept watching. I was like, man, it's a little violent though. You know, I'm, I don't really care for that violence, but I, I really liked their, their story. You know, it was a really good backstory and stuff. And so I'm going to keep watching. I kept watching and what was really interesting was I noticed as I was doing that, that my outer world what started happening there. It started becoming a little chaotic, a little tumultuous and stuff. I'm like, what is going on? My dreams I was having at night were, were tumultuous. There was stuff happening. And I thought, well, well, that's interesting. And then something said, well, what have you been watching? And I was binge watching it because I was, it was, it would do that. Every show would be end on a cliff, a cliffhanger and you had to watch it. Just took you right into the next episode. Yes. And so I was just watching, Oh, I don't know how many at a time, you know, in, in a day. Like, so it was really doing that. And I thought, hmm, I wonder if this could be doing something. <laughs> and so when it was done, it was over, I, I didn't watch anymore. And, um, and, and then everything started smoothing out. And then I started, maybe a later time, I watched something with drama in it. And you know, it was very dramatic. And again, it's gonna do that same thing, pulls you from one to the next, you get sucked right in. And stuff started happening again in my outer world. And I'm like, well, this is interesting. So this it was like an experiment that was just happening. And I'm glad I was aware of it, that it, aware of what was happening and that I brought my awareness to it. Otherwise, I think we just do this very innocently. We just watch and, and just say, okay, well, it's just a TV show. Well, it's something up here doesn't compute it that way. It's, it's seeing these things, especially if you get sucked in and you're emotionally in there with everything that's going on. And then it starts, it starts affecting the dreams and, it, and then you'll start seeing it in your outer world. And, and it may seem very innocent. Oh, it's no big deal. It is. You, there's a direct correlation. And so then it's just like, okay, I'm going to choose what I want to allow in. I'm going to choose what I, what I'm watching. And that's, you know, it may not be a lot of choices out there, but, but it just, you just get more selective. It's like, just like in eating, like you said, the diet of the mind, it's a diet of the body. You get more selective of what you're allowing into your body. It's just the very same thing. And at first it might be kind of hard because it's like, well, there's nothing on. <laughs> so um, there's nothing for me to watch. But like I said, find other things. 
Um, yeah. It's. <laughs> And they're, they're, that's what we tend to think, right? It's the old programming of nothing to watch. But now with YouTube, there's infinite, there's infinite programming to watch. You right. can, you can really shift into nourishing, mm -hmm. like a, pulling away from the, the sex and aggression, typical drama, human experience into love and ascension, mm -hmm. right? Making that shift in, and it's really a beautiful thing when you connect with that. And, and when you go into the dream state, and you're really going into your real existence, that's closer. Yeah. The dream state is actually closer to who we really are than the physical state. Right. Closer to that all beings that we are, the, the infinite hologram. And you'll notice in, the, yeah, in that dream state, your dreams take on feelings of that violence when you're experiencing it because you're interpreting that physical experience as mush. As your real physical experience is getting mixed in with what you were bringing into your consciousness through that programming, like that is such a light bulb yeah. event, right? When you realize that and yeah. it's contributing to the ebb and flow of your physical life when you're bringing these sources in that don't serve you and how they're manifesting themselves in dreams, how they're having a law of attraction into mm -hmm. what they're bringing closer to you and the drama will come closer and closer to you or the, <laughs> the violence that may manifest itself in a different way, bringing things that you don't want closer to you. Well, I mean, that's just what we're saying. We, that's just showing us what create, what powerful creators we are. It's yes. these th little things like that. That's when you realize, I mean, you are doing that. By you doing this and that's causing this, and then you're in the middle. You're the piece that makes it all happen. Yes. I mean, that could just play, 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 but if there's not, what are they trying to show me? If there's not this person here, you're the connector between this world and the outer world. And so it has to run through you to be created into that outer world. That's how powerful we are. <laughs> so let's choose what we're creating. That's really what we're saying here. Let's choose what we're creating because we have that ability. We are powerful and we can choose exactly what it is that we want our world to look like. This is wonderful time. It's calmed everything down so that we can actually do this. It's like it's taking everything to this blank slate almost. Yes. Like, okay, now what do you want to do? Yes. <laughs> Understand the tools that we have at our disposal to shape our worlds. You know, um, technology is a huge tool that we have to shape our worlds. Right now, this is huge. This is a, this is a great, great hour of power that we use to connect <laughs> with. And we're doing the Facebook groups. And when we do these connections and we do the Facebook lives, I mean, this is super powerful high nutrient activity, right? It's a great resource for us. Mm -hmm. And the other resources that you have for your body and you think about it is you have your ability to at least get some light outside and absorb the sun, right? It's really important now to think about that because we're getting all these warnings and it's like stay inside at all costs. You know, I'm getting messages on my phone, like stay inside today. Don't go outside today, you know, which is great. I appreciate that. However, I do think it is very wise to get outside and get at least 20 minutes of sun, keep your distance, but yeah. taking that light is important and not, not being a product of, of just fear and constriction by being inside. I don't think that's, that's helpful. And that's one of our resources, your ability to use your physical, to go out into the light, to breathe the air and to just feel alive that you're connecting out there. Mm -hmm. And other resources that you have is your imagination. So realize that during this time, we have our imaginations to ask ourselves, like, what, what can I be doing now that's going to serve me the best? What type of project can I do that I didn't really have time for before, but now I really, I have the time to do it. The, the distractions aren't there. And we all have projects that, we you know, we want to work on for mm -hmm. QHHD practitioners out there. I mean, it's really, it, there can be a number of things that we're working on, you know, our story, the narrative of how you came into spirituality and something I talk about in the business classes, but maybe it's just writing your own bio, like looking back and why not just go back and write the story of your life? Like think about it, get yourself in a meditative place and start to go through and journal through the story of your life. I mean, wouldn't that be an amazing project to work on you know, during this time and leave with something that you can look back on, that you can take pride in, that you can say like, this is me. And in writing that, you'll have more light bulbs that'll be coming on for those nexus points 
and also for maybe ideas of other projects that you can do and you're starting something by coming from within and your power zone in doing this. Well, when you were saying write the story of your life, they were saying, or rewrite it. <laughs> yes, yes. So again, it's what do you want? And this is such a beautiful time to do that. Um, I went out yesterday because there was a chance when, when we're in the busy, I mean, the heavy, normal pattern of the work and everything. I, um, I normally, I just, I'm here at home working or I'm in the office working and I'm just going between the places and I don't really get out and enjoy or like we're in the classes, we're in there teaching. And we're just, I don't get to go out much and just relax. And yesterday for the first time, I went out on my deck in my backyard and just sat there in the sun. And just, it was like, it was so nice to be out there in the fresh air. And I was just calm. And it was, that is such a beautiful, nice thing to do. And there's nobody around here. I have deer. Deer and my cat. You know, so I'm, you know, there's nobody else here. So it's like, um, but it was just nice. And so I, I, I invite, yeah, there's a bunch of you invite, go. I mean, I think we've, we've lost that, some of that. We forgot it. It's like, these are our, these simple pleasures, you know, let's, let's kind of revisit some of those and, and, and accept them and, and embrace them and enjoy them. And because that's what our life is about. We, we've lost touch with some of those yeah, they're saying we lost touch with our pleasures. We, I guess some of us feel guilty about having pleasures. Yes. Hmm, okay. Yes. So. And interesting, you said simple pleasures. Mm -hmm. No pleasure is too simple. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting. It's, we think sometimes that we need to be doing our highest pursuit of every moment. It's got to be some grand thing that you're doing in every moment and you can be hard on yourself and, and and am I really on the path am I doing everything I possibly can you know I'm stressing out over this I'm stressing out over that but really it's it's about that it's it's the moment to moment pleasures that are in alignment with yourself and doing yeah. things you know that are good that make well, all the that, difference that goes world. back to like you said what's serving you and I think that's a good way of determining what is because some people have a, um, they're not sure what that means when we say if it doesn't serve you, if it serves you, and that might be a good way of determining that. Is, is it pleasure? Does it bring you know? They're saying bliss. So it's something along that line, like you said. It's these little things that just create that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and and we all notice them, right? There should be pleasures that are blossoming during this period because this is an incubation period of the new world, of the new earth, of the new everything. And, and for me personally, this, these videos that we've been creating together have been a beautiful manifestation of pleasure, of passion, of connection, and really expressing myself in, in my unique way. And it, and it feels so good to just unleash that part of you that feels awake, that feels alive. And so that's my personal example of, of what I'm pursuing like that. And then the conversations that flow from this, it's interesting, we spend this time together and there's a density to it. And then it kind of springs out where people now are connecting and they want to talk about specific things that, that we mentioned in the conversation. And then I kind of see how that reverberates and different pieces of that may go. So it's an example of how in my world, I see now, okay, this is a, this is a breakthrough thing that's really, really cool. And I know it's, it has the potential to work for every single person in the exact way that they want it to, because everyone's little pleasure or nuance is, is a little bit different. We're all like snowflakes. So are you, do you like writing? Do you like speaking? Maybe do you like just doing something outside alone? Is it collaborating on something? Is it brainstorming a different idea? I mean, at that, is it going into spirituality and checking more about astrology, numerology? There's so many different things that we can explore. And it's also a great time to, to get back into our core too, of like circling back and checking out books. 
that we've always kind of wanted to check out or read mm -hmm. or even watch videos about books for those of us that don't want to read anymore. And there's a lot of people <laughs> who just don't even read anymore. There's, there's, a, there's literally videos out there about people summarizing the books and they do it in an animated fashion to the point where there's not many books being read anymore. But if you love books, you can go back to books. <laughs> okay, it's up to you. Yeah. <laughs> do it's what makes up to you. <laughs> so. Um, when you said that, you said something about, um, it was reminding me of one of the questions in here and they're asking about, I don't remember if it was last week or which week it was, um, that, that somebody's talking about the ringing in the ears and you said it was a download happening. And I've, and that I've always gotten a little bit different, but it's still something. And someone was asking, well, what did you mean, you know, by download, what kind of download, what is it, what's it doing, what's happening there? Do you want to elaborate on that? what kind of download when they hear yeah, the ringing? Yeah, that's what they were asking. It's like, what, what kind of download is it when there's ringing in the ears? Because you had said it was a download. Sure. Well, what was your, when, right when you heard the ringing, what was your sponsoring thought? So go back to that moment. The ringing is a trigger. Look into your thought. Think that, think you were thinking, oh, okay. Um, uh, geez, the example of a thought. You could have been thinking like, oh, I got to get back home in time to take this call with someone, right? Okay, what was the emotion that was in that? And just being like, oh, okay, in that, well, I uh, don't wanna let them down. Okay, you just hear some kind of ringing, you see some kind of trigger that's somehow related to the emotion behind the event that was happening at that time. And there's a connection to that. That's usually, it's really interesting how consciousness usually has a literal component Yes. that we tend to neglect. And it also surfaces in dreams also. And the dreams have this super literal connection that we tend to have like these big ahas. Oh, aha. Yeah, that's right. That makes sense. But, but you, you, for whatever reason, it gets convoluted and we gloss over to it. Mm -hmm. So that's the best thing in order for someone for in order for me to break down what the how the ring would be connected i'd have to have them in front of me i'd ask them what they're thinking they would articulate it and then i would go one or two levels deep and then i would bring that out and we would crystallize that thought so i can't give it the full explanation that i would love without the the, the greater detail of it but i can tell you those are certain triggers that i would examine when i do hear the ring very cool. And I always got, and it could be it shifted now, which is fine. Um, I always got that it was a calling to go higher. It's like, it's, it's, there's something, it's just which to bring our frequency up. And as soon as we do, then we'll be able to understand. It's like, they're trying to talk to us. They're trying to explain things and they're just, the frequency is a little higher than we can um, uh, connect with. And so we bring our frequency up to be able to connect with it. And then we'll be able to hear what's being said or understand what the message is, something like that. So it's very similar. Um, it sounds like, but it's, it's something, see, it's something happening. So you got to look at what was going on right there. And um, another thing I've been noticing, it's like another experiment I'm doing with myself is my ears will itch from time to time. And it'll be one ear, it'll be the other ear, it'll, it'll alternate and stuff. So I'm paying attention to what's happening at that point you know, when that's, when it's doing that, because it's like, there's something I'm supposed to hear apparently. And I'm trying to, and I'm looking at discerning as to which ear, like what's that meaning for me and stuff. So, you know, this is, we're, we're getting more and more in tune with ourselves. And that's, this is a wonderful time to do that. So if you've got some things going on, rather than going, oh my gosh, I've got all these problems. I got all these issues. I got all this stuff going on. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's something trying to communicate <laughs> with you. And so now it's, or it's, it's not something, it's you trying to communicate with you and just go into it further. Like you said, find the message, find out what it is. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. All of this is going deeper. That's what this is all about. It's knowing who we are. Oh, they're, they're really yelling trust right now. Somebody has trust issues. <laughs> so um, but it's like, that's what this is about building your trust. It's just, you know, when we don't trust people, you say, oh, I have trust issues. I don't trust other people. You know who's really, who you're really not trusting? You. You don't trust yourself. And you don't trust, because we don't trust the universe. We don't trust anything. And we have trust issues. We don't trust anything. But ultimately, what the one we do not trust is ourselves. We do not trust that we know what to do. 
We do not trust that we have the answers. We do not trust that we can do this. We have to have all this other stuff. And so that, that is what this is really, it's, this is super important for that is that going in thing. It's to understand ourselves and love ourselves. And because we're, we're our best friends. We're the ones we got all the time. No, we don't ever leave ourselves. You know, we are always here. You're the one that's with you all the time. I mean, you're never going to leave. Somebody's got an abandonment thing here, okay? You are never going to leave you. So trust yourself to know what's right for you. So it starts here. This is for you. It starts here. It starts now. Right now. Step by step, just do it. You can do this. You can do this. Okay. I love it when they do that. <laughs> oh, I hope that helped. Um, but you got this. You've got to know this. You've got to know this. You've got this. It's okay. The only one, and some people that's used as a, as a thing, only one I can rely on is myself. I can't trust anybody else then do that, trust you. And when you build your trust in you, guess what happens in your world? Your whole world becomes trustworthy. <laughs> it's just, that's how it works. So you, you build you, you build you, you love you. Shall I go to another question? Sure, yeah, that <laughs> okay. was well-spoken, really, oh. really beautiful. <laughs> um, Okay, we can do a, we'll just, about QHHT, we'll get this one out. So you, we've okay. talked about the level two class mm -hmm. uh, going online. They're saying, when will this be ready? Uh, with so many at home now, there will be much time to cover material. So do you yes. want to talk about that a little bit? <laughs> I've been in the lab, working away, going through videos, um, programming. So we're, we're still on track to have the launch uh, at the end of the month. So it should be around the 30 day period. Um, April, we're dedicating to this, and um, yeah, and we're we'll have it finalized exactly how we're going to format it and what how we're supporting it with live um, and how this will all come across so that you get the best possible experience. But it's kind of funny that's that's the zone that I've been in <laughs> for the last week. I've been in that level two yeah. zone of the online and the nuances, and then. I'm into the interview now, getting to that part from the very beginning and into the interview and kind of working through um, working through how we're doing there. But it's, it's coming along super, super well and you guys are gonna love it. Yeah. Okay, we have questions broken down. I think we've covered, you know, that, that message at the beginning covered all these questions about the virus. I okay, I have another thing about the virus, if you like, just the final icing on the cake of the, okay, super. the virus. And it's, it's an interesting perspective that, that we get through doing QHHT and having exposure to session after session after session, not only, not only teaching it around the world, but also getting the feedback from various practitioners when they have breakthrough moments. And the, the main thing, or one of, the, one of the main, main things that we learn from all this is that everything has consciousness. That there's consciousness present in everything. And the light bulb started to come on to me is, I bet that there are actually practitioners out there that through their practice, there's someone in the world that's actually had a session where the virus came through, where someone is the virus, or they have a parallel life as the consciousness of the virus. Mm -hmm. And just by having that thought, I think some of the virus consciousness opened up and there was a door opening and I was able to connect with actually what that consciousness is thinking. And so it doesn't think, but it's an abstract way of its programming and how it's moving forward. And the, the virus is reaching out and connecting in that I've, I'm doing this as a help. I'm programmed and much like everyone else, I'm moving forward. Humans are moving forward. The virus consciousness is also moving forward in the way that it's actually programmed to do. And it's done this on a very 
micro micro level and it's so it's not as complicated as human consciousness and the many layers that we have but nonetheless it is moving forward and it's it's completing the agreement that humanity has asked for it to interlude and and ask for it to proceed forward with this and the way that it's playing out is very much in harmony with the way that it was planned out in terms of like breaking through. And now the world is in this place where they've been paused, where the past belief systems and the, and, and the entire governmental systems, health systems, business systems, finance systems, stock systems, transportation systems, social connecting system, all these things now have been completely opened up and they're ripe for a re-engineering period. And it is going to happen. Like now I'll shift into the human consciousness. There's one thing about humans that we've done really well is that we've continued to progress forward. You know, if you think about the standard of living that we had like in the 1900, uh, year 1900 or something like that, right? 1920, whatever it is, you can say that we've progressed forward in our standard of living and the quality of life that we have progressing forward with time is much, much higher, right? We go through these oscillations, but the, the curve is up. So now we're going through this oscillation, but when we get out of this oscillation, the curve of progression is, is much, much higher. And that the virus is actually doing its job in a really, really good way and humanity is doing its job in a really, really good way in responding to it and sort of coming together. Now what the world needs to do is the world needs to come together. So the various countries need to share. That's a missing piece mm. from this. And what they need to do is before we were building more and more of these uh, Brexit system, right? Uh, let's exit, let's pull away, break away. You know, they're bad, Europe is bad. Mm -hmm these systems and the dictators forming and strengthening, isolating, right? And now we have a common reason to actually share information because sharing information is actually for the good of every country. And it's undeniable, right? Holding something back is, is not good. And when one country breaks, they should be sharing, they should be connecting. So for us to harmonize in that unity and that sharing of the countries of their information is another step forward in our evolution in the way that the earth should progress. So whatever way you think, whatever way you see, if you could focus on that of now a more of unity of sharing, it's going to help us get to where we need to go in the best way possible in the fastest amount of time. So it was kind of interesting just connecting virus consciousness to human response, to collective answers and these things that float around in my head <laughs> no, no, that's very cool, Kai. And when you said that, this is how you con connected with it. That's exactly what I did when I was writing Soul Speak. You connect with the the illness, the injury, the the emotion, the whatever. You, I would crawl inside of it. I would connect with it and get what it was trying to say. What is it? What's its message? What is it there for? Things like that. So it's exactly what I did. Now you know how I wrote the book. <laughs> that's, but that's and. All of us and how do people get the book? Since you bring up the book, oh, how does someone I bring it up? How can you get the book? Yeah, um, it's in many sources. You can get it at the. Uh, you can get it on. Gosh, uh, I think we have links on QHHT official. We have um, links there. But they go over to uh, the publishing company Ozark M Mountain Publishing. Ozark MT. You can also get it on Amazon. You can get it on. You can order it probably at bookstores if you still go to bookstores. Um, uh, but they can order it there if they don't have it physically there. Um, but it's called Soul Speak, the Language of Your Body. And it's what it's doing. It's talking about all these different aches, pains, illnesses. What are they trying to tell us? They're, they're there for a reason. They have a message. And so it's understanding how they're communicating with us. And in order for me to get this language uh, translation manual for everyone, I had to crawl in. I had to connect with each and everything to understand what it was saying. And it's beautiful. I mean, when you do that, there's no fear. I mean, I talked one-on-one -on -one with cancer. I talked one-on-one -on -one with fear. I, we discussed all this. We, it's like, what is it we, we need to know? What are you trying to teach? Things like that. And they have so much they want us to learn. That's why they're there. It's great. You, it removes the fear. It removes everything from it. it becomes 
like you said, everything has consciousness, you know, and it shows us what we're all doing. We're all on this together. We're all working this together and we're all helping each other. It's fascinating. Isn't it? <laughs> it's such a different way, an empowering perspective of tipping things upside down and understanding the drivers of everything and putting yourself in their shoes, right? And it's, it works for humanity, but it also works for other elements of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And with the degree of skill that we have in navigating these alternate forms of consciousness and being able to describe exactly what's going on, whether it be first person or third person or however, we have a lot of uh, aptitude with that through what we've been doing with our practices. And when I sense this, virus and i connect with it it's funny but i can feel myself going into the subatomic world and the subatomic world is just like this world to a virus or a subatomic figure um the virus would be bigger than that of course but um see that, the same proportion your analytical mind trying to come in yeah yeah <laughs> you just gotta stay with it <laughs> yeah so i'm trying to okay i want to be perfect at how i'm stating this but yeah i'm trying to put myself way out there and then and i'm like oh, i should be precise in my language <laughs> which it's yeah the consciousness of a virus and the language of human beings are two totally totally different things and even like connecting them is is sort of unusual I don't think this conversation happens very often um, out there out of all the virus conversations. But <laughs> <Probably> not. <laughs> we are breaking new ground here in our conversations. And that is the goal. So I would encourage anybody that is out there to, over the course of the next week, to see if they can connect with the consciousness of the virus. Mm -hmm. Because when you point the flashlight out of it, you connect with it and you can actually empathize with it. There is no fear to it whatsoever right. because you understand it. Remove they're, the fear they're showing remove me, the power. Yeah, they're showing me, you know how, I mean, because this is something else we can all do. And I know some are doing it, many, many are doing it. And so they're just showing me it's no different than when we communicate with animals. You know, I mean, everything has consciousness. And so our animals, they're a little easier to imagine that because they're working around us and things like that. But we can communicate with each and every one of them, even the tiniest bug, even the, you know, every single creature we can communicate with. And so it's the very same thing. You know, you just do the same, you just get on their level. You just kind of, you just connect with them energetically and you'll see amazing things happen with animals. <laughs> it's just wild. You know, Kai, you always have birds always <laughs> doing crazy things around you. And, yeah. um, you know, it's just, it's, we can do that and it's no different. They're just, they're saying, okay, if it's easier for you to believe that you can communicate with an animal, it's the very same thing as doing that. So whatever you're doing to do that, you do the same with all of these other things. Yes. And you, you bring something up very interesting. You're bringing up so it's kind of communication with the animals. And when we think about the new earth, there's an expanded, even more expanded view of it that we tend to overlook. And that's that the new earth is this expansion in this higher dimensional place for all, for all. It's not just humans. Mm -hmm. It's for animals too. It's for trees. Mm -hmm. It's infinite in, in, its, in its reach and this earth and how we're expanding. And that's pretty incredible. We're going to notice that our level of connection to non-human things is also expanding now. And this is just the, the teeny tiny tip of it but you can start to feel that. You can get into nature and you can start to feel the trees. <laughs> and boy, oh boy, did I ever feel that when we were doing our sound healing in Mount Shasta. Yeah. And we were on our backs and we felt the, I felt literally the, the breathing and the ebb and flow of these beautiful trees and they were giving this energy. And I've, I've never felt anything like that before. It was completely wild and it was something that I, I made notes to myself that I wanted to go back to because it was so strong and it was so beautiful and these big trees and the connection that they do have to the earth and their roles yeah. and understanding their consciousness is incredibly fascinating. I invite, here we go again, encourage, you know, I, heard, I felt someone go, trees? You know? <laughs> and it's like, communicate with trees, go talk to trees. I know they're always talking about hug a tree. Yeah, they love it. They love to be talked to. They're passed by all the time. Nobody pays any attention to them. <laughs> they notice that, guys. They notice it. They're there. They're supporting so much, and they've got everything for you. And just to be acknowledged, that completely makes their day. It probably makes their eon 
<laughs> just, just that somebody noticed me. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's great hearing tree stories in sessions when people have sessions and they, they talk about the trees and mm -hmm. they feel like they feel very stable. They feel very strong. They have the interconnection, the yes. root system connecting through, I believe it's different funguses that are connecting and right. they go in with through the roots trees. That's how with they, other trees. Yeah. All the trees on the planet are connected to yes. each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's their system and their warning system and their signs and how they notice things. And it's really interesting listening to these sessions of the trees have had, and a lot of them end up with, they get chopped down <laughs> and they hear the experience and they're, they're accepting of the chopping and it's, it's just not a problem for them. And it's a decision that they've yeah, also and they're made. They're going and they on to their next life or they're reforming into, I mean, now, well, when, you know, when they get cut down, they're gone, but, um, I guess, <laughs> but sometimes it's like, or like a rock. Okay. Okay. We're getting right out there now, but, um, this is good. A rock, you know, it, it has different ways that it moves. I mean, it can be taken from one place and put in another place. Um, and it can be crushed and now it becomes gravel for a road. So now it's going to have a whole different view. A whole, see, these are all different experiences that they have. And I was thinking the tree, it goes through these things, you know, but I think once it's cut down, it's that life is over. But the wood now is used for other things, hopefully. And so that's taking on other lives. But, um, uh, oh, they're saying just no judgment. Somebody's going, oh, my God, they're off the wall here. <laughs> no judgment. <laughs> Uh, you guys are ready for this, okay? You're ready. If you're listening to this, if you're watching this, you are ready. You wanted this. You're like, oh my God, you're really stretching my mind. You're really making me. <laughs> well, also, if they're, you know, we're opening our audiences now. If there are people skeptical that are hearing, they're hearing information on tree consciousness mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, we're not, yeah, it would be fine if we are tapping into something and we're articulating what we're tapping into, but. For me, it's, it's beyond that. I've heard multiple QHHT sessions of Life as Trees because I, I love listening to them. And there, there's a high degree of similarity between all of them, which is always interesting because you get them from different people, all walks of life, different places of the world. And they come in this state, this super conscious state of all knowing, and they're tapping into the same thing. And their stories are just all remarkably, you know, remarkably similar. So for the person that needs a little more validation on that, uh, yeah, we've been getting this from multiple sources. In addition to just, I feel it in my heart too, which I don't need anything else when I do feel it in my heart. And now when I go, especially in the areas of the big trees, I, I really can feel something that's significant. And it's, it's just opening myself up to a perception that's already there for absolutely everyone. We just choose, most people just choose to ignore it. So cool, so cool. Okay, um, let's see here. Okay, we covered all of those. Um, da -da -da. I think um, we have a bunch on fear, but I feel like we, um, I think we covered all that with that beginning. I mean, we, we did this, this big thing and it's just like, if you're picking it apart and trying to wonder about specific things in there, that's you still trying to get control of this and trying to get to the normal of this or trying to, let's go back to when it was normal, let's go this. And it's like, um, this, if you haven't gotten that message yet, we're not going back. It's not going back to whatever we had before. We're going, this is the new normal. And now we just keep going and just trust that you're good. You planned this out. It's all good. This is where we, we trust. We trust in what we're doing. We trust in what we set up. We trust in ourselves. We trust in the bigger powers, you know, and that's where it was going back to the trust before. So yeah, if you, if you're, if you're picking away at it, that's that need to control. And that that's part of the stuff that they really want us to let go. They go, we, we only, the only thing you can control is you. That's it. You can control your reactions. You can control yes. what you do, things like that. But that's, that's it. You can't control another person. You can't control the world. You can't control currencies. You can't control, you can't control any of this stuff, but you can control you. And when you monitor and work with what you're doing and how you're reacting, that has a ripple effect that goes out. And that 
inadvertently, indirectly, just starts affecting other people. So that's how we help humanity and how we help the world and how we help things change. It's not by fearing it and, and wanting to know when it's all right. It's by us changing us and being our best selves and being who we truly are, our authentic selves. Then that shows the rest of the world how to be their authentic selves. What a wonderful, beautiful world that is. And that is where we are. That's our creation. So it's entirely up to each and every one of us to do that. So I, I really encourage you to let go of that need to know these minute little details. Let go of anything that was from the past that you're trying to get back to. Remember that message from the beginning. That was going to be many that will try to go back there. And you're going to find, I did this before, a personal situation of mine many, many years ago. And when they moved me out of the situation, and it's like, this one's over. And I kept trying to go back. And it was like the steel door slammed down. It's like, you know, that path is gone. And that's the same feeling here. It's, it's not going back. We're not going back. This is, we're, we're recreating, we're doing something new. That doesn't mean go back. You don't go back to create new. Go forward. So let's all go forward. Let's, remember, it's all one step at a time. That's all you can know. It just, you know where you are in this moment and this time staying in the now and just stepping in the now. What a great new way of approaching things. And how long have we been told to do that? <laughs> now it's time to live our truth. Walk or talk. They're showing me the footsteps. Just stay in your footsteps. Stay true to you in your footsteps. <laughs> you have anything to say on that, Kaya? I feel you're just, you're really in deep. Um, well, I, I, I forgot the question. So yeah. <laughs> It's about, there's a bunch of them about when are we going back to, there's, they're picking it apart, you know, back to normal, back to, um, uh, when will this happen? Will this ever happen? So that's just that need to control the whole process or need to know what's going to happen in order to go forward. And this is a huge thing is you don't need to know what's going to happen in order to go forward. Sometimes you just go forward and you just keep taking your steps. You will know as you do it, what the right move is at that point. Yes. I have something that's great to say. Um, this is something that's really profound in that in our taking these steps forward, the change, the changes that we are making with ourselves and the direction that we're focusing, not only are we changing our presence from moment to moment to moment, we're shifting our futures by the decisions that we make present moment to moment to moment, right? So that's pretty much understood as a common, commonly held belief, but what we are also doing is we are also changing our timeline of our past to be more in energetic alignment with who we are in these moments right now. And a new you is forming that has a different past. It has a different past. It has a different future. And its present is constantly shifting. And this thing is, is always changing. And it's picking up momentum with the amount of thought that you put into something and the emotion that you drive through it. So we are changing our past with this, which is something that is not usually thought about as being possible with humanity, but it, it, it is as part of the very construct of what we are doing now in this world, in this earth. So you're so powerful in, in being a moment to moment to moment creator. Choose, choose those thoughts that serve you and store them in the most beneficial way possible. I can't emphasize it enough that as you go through these experiences, even if something could be interpretive as a incredible hardship, store it in the way that serves you most. Store it, use your creativity, use your imagination to take the idea and put it in your mind and reference it only in the most positive way possible about how you learn from it and why it was necessary for it to be there. Absolutely. That's beautiful. And there goes that trust a thing again. It's like, hang on to that. Hang on to that, hold on to that, because that's what you'll get. You know, rather than it's like you want to know what's going to happen, that's what 
what's going to happen is what you're creating. Yes, I'm getting a question. Kaya, can you please re-describe or rewrite that? So I can re-describe it by saying that our consciousness is, there's so many, I mean, for us to really get the full gravity of what consciousness is, it's right now, you're in this moment, I speak, and there's literally like 8 billion possibilities. Uh, it's, it's that big a number about what the next what the next step is or the next pillar of consciousness or the next thing that is getting lit up that is my path through consciousness because everything that has ever existed ever will exist it's already present right here right now there's a continuum of time a construct that we've created as human beings to just give us a mechanism to understand the nature of our reality but it is an artificial construct that we create the true reality of time, of your past, your future, and your present is actually distorted because everything is happening right now all at once. So there really isn't even a past, a present, a future. However, as part of this experience and that we've conditioned ourselves as human, we are reflective and we're looking into the present as the moment of now as the future into something that's going to be happening after the now as the past of something that already happened from the now. When really these are just timelines that you've lit up. If you imagine a two-way flashlight and in every moment you're signing that flashlight and you're maybe put it on your head and that flashlight is illuminating a series of present moments that extend out infinitely while simultaneously illuminating some past moments that extend out infinitely that are in alignment with your belief system, your emotional state, and your passion and energetic desires and your physicality that are energizing the gravity and the intensity of that light. And this is another conversation I think we could take up as an entire YouTube, mm -hmm. but this is oversimplification, that this light is empowered by your belief system and your emotions the stronger and more embedded you are into your belief system and your emotion, the, the, the stronger the density of that ray of light or the thicker that ray of light, the less embedded you are into your belief systems about that particular moment or your desire about that moment or your current physical state, the more that easily that that's changing and that can shift in many ways. So as we loosen ourselves up and as we realize that we're in this state of everything changing with the virus breaking things down and making a new reality even more malleable, the collective is also having an impact on this, the way that this light is going. And it's making it even more sensitive to going in different directions and even more capable, which is great because that is something that's very powerful. And when you're, when it is light and when in that illumination is loose, you're at your most creative self, you're at your most creative place. You have the most potential within you to go in the desired direction and to zip forward into it. And when you're zipping forward into it and you're making that choice, again, that, that alignment of choice, your past, present, and your future, it's, it's changing and it's malleable based upon those factors that I've just described. So it was a kind of an esoteric concept breaking down the structure. Very esoteric. <laughs> yes, but I can I can bring examples into it. We could have a future conversation and get mm -hmm. get a little bit deeper if people want to about that. This isn't something you hear very often. <laughs> yeah, I think there. I think that's a great idea. We can do an, another show on it. Um, just because I'm, I'm feeling. I'm feeling a lot of excitement out there. Like this is what some people are really wanting this kind of a meet, you know, and everything. So, and that's where we are. It's like, let's get off of this other stuff. Let's go beyond. And this is the kind of stuff. Let's really expand our, our consciousness, our understanding. Let's expand our understanding what we're doing and our, you know, so that is a wonderful way to be productive in this time period, you know, is working on us. And, you know, you can do mechanical things. We can do things like that as well, but it's about us. You know, each and every one of us do your thing. So we can definitely talk more about that. That'd be wonderful. Mm. I have um, someone asking about, it's about, they have a few questions on books. And this person, it's David. Uh, hi, David. 
And he's asking yeah. about in Keepers of the Garden, I was left wondering what the powers were that Phil received. Phil was the person that was the subject um, of the regressions that mom did and, and came up with that story. It was over a period of time that she was doing these regressions. And um, I, I still know Phil, he he's lives in the area. Um, what happened to him after that is be, he became, his powers increased as far as he essentially became a medium. I mean, he would just get anywhere in someone's vicinity and he's picking up. It's like people are wanting to give messages to someone. And so he, he's like, it was really awkward at first. He said, he's like, he just, they got, they're bugging him. You know, it's like, you got to tell this person this. And so he'd finally say something, you know, and, and to them. And um, so that's how his world changed. You know, and he, and he, so he, every time you're talking to him, he's, he's like tapping into all these other beings around you and everything and, and stuff. So, um, but that not only does it happen, like it happened with him, we see it happen all of the time. You have sessions, you're doing this. This is what, because it's opening up. That's what a QHHT session is. It's tapping you and connecting you to your higher part. And so it shows you what this connection is and how to communicate with it. And once you know that, now you can do it on a conscious level. Hey, <laughs> and that's what they want. That's what our bigger parts want. They want us to be able to do that. Don't, we don't need to keep going to other people outside of ourselves to get our answers. They, they said, that's we're long beyond that. Stop doing that. Stop giving our power away. Just, we have all the answers, remember? And it's all within us and it's with that connection. So we show you how to do that, how to make that connection. And then you can do that on a daily basis. And as you keep working with it and trusting it, you it builds stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger to where you're just having conversations with this higher part of yourself about anything and everything. And you're given all this wonderful guidance constantly. Everything you do is guided. It's this, it's this cooperative way that you move through life it's no longer uh, fear and terror and wonder of what you know what's happening because you know you're in communication and cooperation with your higher self that has the big picture and it knows exactly what you're doing so it's beautiful and so if you are wondering about how can I develop my abilities get a session once once this is through you can get a session okay if you're in an area you might be in an area where you can do that but Find out a way to do that if that's something you really want to know. QHHT is fantastic at connecting you to your true self and to get your own answers. Well, if you want to add anything on that, Kaya? No, well spoken. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Now, in one of Dolores' books, they said that when we shift, we won't be aware that it's happened because people will disappear from our lives. Her question is, who is shifting to the new earth? Um, and then she's trying to correlate it to the virus. Well, that first message we said, it said, this is, you know, what's happening here um, as far as who's, who's choosing to pass with the virus. Um, and these are people, they're teachers, you know, for the old paradigm and the old, I mean, we, anything we want to put on that, it can be put there. They're showing us, oh, what they're telling me really right now, what they're showing us is how to let go. Let's let go. Of, um, of these things. So as far as the shifting, um, they, you know, this is a constant movement thing that we're doing. We're constantly shifting. It's been a process. In 2011, they told me it's done. The new earth is done. We're here. We're already shifted. And it's like, but everything still looks the same. And I said, well, yeah, you're not going to see it until you believe it. You have to believe it. You have to, and then you'll start seeing things shift and you'll start noticing it with every decision that you make. And that's where you keep moving. It's like, you've got the two earths are here. They're different frequencies. One's this very dense frequency with all this fear. And, and we're actually beyond that one. We, that one was of many years ago where it was that, that dense. We've actually, you know, by our choices and our things that we've done, we've actually moved from there. Everybody has, we've all shift been shifting. And then some of us are just choosing, okay, this is where I get off the train. I don't want to go any further. That's fine. That's their decision. Remember, no judgment. Each soul has their plan, their course, their, their mission, their journey. So maybe they're done with their journey. They accomplished what they came here to do. Okay, time to get off the train. But then others of us, we want to keep riding this train. Okay, this is our choice. So we still, and it's all based on decisions that we're making as to what frequency we're in. Our ultimate goal is to be in that highest frequency of that new earth, you know, but really, like Kai was saying, you know, we have 8 billion different 
things that we are experiencing here, eight billion different people, eight billion different experiences and how this shift happens. There's no way to say this is how it's going to be for everyone because it's not going to be like that. It's a very personal thing. So every choice you make is moving you closer or further from the new earth, if that's your desired destination, you know, but I trust me that you're, you're already way into it. You know, the get truthful with yourself here. Do things look different than they did five years ago in the earth? You know, what's going on on the earth? I mean, that's what you have to look at. You have to go back five, 10 years ago and then look back to here now. Have things changed? Is it a different world that we're living in? And, and that's when you start realizing, you know, people have gotten more, um, uh, I mean, especially in the last couple of years, you see a lot more consciousness. You know, people are becoming more conscientious of animals and, and the earth and, and doing very specific things and for themselves and stuff. So that's, see, that's a shifting. We want to make it some grandiose thing, but it's each person does their own individual little dance and shifts. So enjoy your dance. And then just each one, every time you make a decision, because they told me this, oh gosh, I don't even know what year it was. Um, I was going out of a door, out of a hotel, and I went out the door, and I wasn't sure which way to go. I was like, I could go right or I could go left. And they're like, uh-huh, that's how it works. I'm like, what do you mean that's how it works? I said, that's how it works. It's every choice is moving you in a different direction. And so it's which way do you want to go? Which one? And see, and that goes back to what we were saying as far as, what feels good, what feels right, what is, what is in alignment. So it's like, and you'll get a hit. You will, you will know, you will know in your internal core what is right for you to do at that point. That's that guidance system you have. Each and every one of us has this most magnificent guidance system. And that's what, trust it. Trust you. Trust yourself to know what's right for you. Yes. And now the guidance system is something that I'd like to expand on a little bit because it's so important. And I think there's some confusion into understanding when people say, well, I have that voice, but then I hear a different voice and then I hear a different voice and I have a different voice that's telling me this and a different voice that's telling that. How do I know which voice is that guidance system? Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can tell which voice to listen to for that guidance system by how you feel about that message. Mm -hmm. So in other words, is that message indicative of your passion? Is it indicative of what livens you up? What makes you feel awake? What makes you feel alive? What makes you feel assertive? What makes you feel like you're moving forward? That's the filter that you can use to process the different voices that you hear in respect to every single moment. And when you follow your passion in moment to moment experiences, it it unwinds a set of other things that are driving you forward. You become more clear with what serves you and what doesn't serve you. That unwinds. You learn to pursue something in and of itself because it feels good. And then that leads to other things that are there, that are behind doors that have been waiting for you to open this initial door. And that passion also allows you to get the sense of gratification of going towards something and making progress. Because as you make progress with your sense of passion, you get a feeling of good. Because as human beings, the thing that I think we crave the most is a feeling of progress. Even if it's this much progress towards anything. Oh, did I make this relationship just a little bit better? Did I eat just a little bit more healthy? It's these things that make us happy that allow us to move forward because I think we have natural, these natural attractive drivers within us to bring the goodness into our lives. And we give each other, we were created with that internal barometer and it's so clear, it's your passion, your barometer of passion that drives you through this earth experience in the right direction and the direction that you truly need to go and that will serve you the most. So just listen. Follow your passion. Take them as far as you possibly can. Keep walking through them, into them. And if a door stops you at the end of one, no expectations, realize that's just a fork in the road and you're meant to go down in another direction. And this can be applied to anything. And drop expectation overall with where you need to be. 
and complete expectation with how your passions are unfolding. Because a lot of times we think that our passions have to drive us into a particular outcome. When really, when you're following that passion for the sense of the passion, you realize more within yourself. And there could be something that's just as important that you only realize when you get deep down into that passion and you get to that fork. And that's actually what you're meant to do and where you're meant to go. So that's reminding amazing. me like, like being, um, enjoying the journey rather than just focusing on the destination. That's what it sounds like. And so if you're following your passion, it's like you're not just trying to get to an end goal. You're enjoying that trip along the way and you're just being in total passion and bliss along the way and enjoying every step of it. And yes. yeah, and then when you do get to the destination, it's even better rather than you have all these expectations. I'll be happy when I'll be happy when I can do this when, and then you get there and none of it's true. Yes. You know, you so many expectations on it. That's the and, biggest thing that you're bringing up is it's, it's the expectations of following through on something and you think things have to be a certain way. And maybe you've been dreaming about something for years and years and years. And if I could just get to that point, I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. I'll be happy. And you think it's that destination point, but you do realize it's not that destination point because when you hit that destination point, there'll be another destination that'll exactly. be set up. It's an endless journey. Right. The destinations keep coming. So drop the expectation and learn to appreciate the actual steps that you're taking through this and that this grand experiment that we're living through in earth consciousness right now, we are meant to be feeling great every day. We are meant to get the beauty out of every day. We're meant to learn from every day. Our life is not meant to stop. We're not meant to feel fear. We're not meant to feel pity. We're not meant to actually feel sad. This is, I give kind of credit to what the impetus of that was many, many years ago when I first read Conversations with God. And uh, one of the things that really, really, really popped was uh, a quote in the book that said, that human beings are not meant to experience painful thoughts. When you experience something as painful, it's a sign that you've simply thought the wrong thought. So just adjust your thought. You're not meant to experience any pain ever. And that is amazing. And it stuck with me for so long. And if you think about all the perceived pain that's going out there and you realize that life is infinite and anyone that's suffering, anyone that's passing, anyone that's going through the, a, a hardship that you may perceive, realize that we've all agreed to our journey and our path, they're actually infinite. There's a point where they're absolutely fine if they reflect inward. There's a point, there's a place we're gonna to go to where they're going to go to that's their true reality, that's blissful and it's pure love. And when you think about that, you're not going to feel that sadness in your heart. You're actually gonna have a level of acceptance. And that's something that's really powerful is replace the sadness with the acceptance and the realization that every journey is a conscious journey for our best good and have the faith. Isn't that beautiful? That is so gorgeous. Um, I feel like that's a great place. That's a great message to end on. Yes, that, thank yeah, you. I, I think that's a great way to move forward to going forward. Thank you, yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to put this in if you guys were just starting the YouTube channel now. So if you guys can please hit the like and the subscribe, anyone that's watching right now. And if we get uh, a lot of people liking and a lot of people subscribing, then we'll continue on with this and we'll continue with these live streams in the channel. And we'll get much, much deeper into various tranches of exploring human consciousness. There's so many doorways that we can go into. There's so many ideas that we can provide depth to. And the one thing that I promise is that when you listen in and you tune in, you're not only going to feel the vibe of us, but you're going to feel the vibe of all the other subscribers, which have a very high vibration. So you're going to feel this subconscious uplift from this. And you're also going to get a unique perspective on things that you might not hear from 
many other places and we will never hold back. We will speak the, our language of the truth. When we get information from this higher consciousness, these other places from channeling, from guides, we will share it, we will let it go, we won't filter it, and we'll give that to you for you to process and for you to contemplate and for you to do something with. Because all this is, is just sharing. It's higher level wisdom that's just passing through our bodies and our mouths, just going out into the ether and sharing and absorbing. And it's really a beautiful place. Um, I always look at comments, I'll read every single comment. So if you wanted to share, different parts of this experience that is meaningful to you, that's interesting to you. If you wanna make future suggestions, we will take all of that into consideration. This is the beginning of what we're building and we wanna put it out there the best way possible that we can move forward so that we all rise up together and we create the most beautiful reality possible here in this time of change for the earth. Yes, and they're showing me, they're reminding me when you said let's we're opening up all these things and let's, we're joining in these things. And they're saying, yes, let's all go down this rabbit hole together. <laughs> so this rabbit hole of happiness, they're calling it. <laughs> so, okay. And anybody, and we do this uh, for anybody that is completely new to this and you've heard about us talking about QHHT, about quantum healing hypnosis technique, and you're interested in exploring this and maybe you want to get certified and learn how to do this yourself and you can join the community and the family. You can go to the QHHT site, qhhtofficial.com. And Julia, you have a coupon code for the online course. It is lots of love. Lots of love to you. <laughs> Anyone that's going to come on, that's 10% off for the online course. And yeah, I want to thank everyone for their patience in the beginning of this of getting through everything. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for showing your love. And thank you, Julia, for another beautiful session so and thank you kaya this has been wonderful i love i love how we work together and i love all these things that we're doing and and thank you everyone we could not do this without you um each and every one of you is so valuable to us love you heart to heart bye everyone <laughs>